This is a free download from the BBC. For more information, go to bbc.co.uk slash podcasts. Recording now, so let's, um, let's, let's be careful, guys. The microphone's are live. Um, OK, I'll do first one, then you do that one, and then you do that one, and then you do that one. Hello, and welcome to the Ian Lee podcast. Coming up, this. D-Rex. This. D-Rex. And most importantly, this. D-Rex. And, and this. D-Rex. <laughs> Just wanted to say I it. thought you were going to say this. It's all right. Oh, no. Go on, go on, go on then, say this. This. Stetson. But first... <laughs> This part of the brilliant podcast script was written by Ollie Bayliss because Kelly Betts, the love of my life, the apple of my eye, the yin to my yang, the wing to my wang, <laughs> what? was away. So this bit of the script is not the best. So hang on, which bit did Ollie write? The bit that I'm reading now? No. It's not, none of this is scripted. No. The, uh, when do I start reading Ollie's words? Now. The only thing from today which was maybe podcast-worthy was Matt Lockwood stopping his two-way to talk about his earwax. Oh. He, it was... Honestly, it was disgusting. I was retching. This is when we were all off. Yeah. This is what happened. Don't all three of you ever take the time off again, guys. That's, that's, that's bad planning. It's management, boss. We right. had fun with Nick Ferrari, though, didn't we? Yeah. Oh! What are you looking at? I've got some earwax that's just fallen out of my ear. Ay, shh! Wowzers. I mean, uh, no, your mic's off. and We don't need to know that. Don't put it in here. or Don't put it back in the ear. I've got no choice. There's uh, there's every choice. Hang on a second. There's, I mean... Across mm. beds, hearts and bucks. Jeez. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. I'm going to be touching all the equipment now. Right. Uh, what you're going to do is don't... Do you want oh, to play God. another song while I just go and, like, wash my hands and get rid of this? That is horrible. Have you got another quick track to play? I've got a long track. Get out. Yeah, I'm going to come back and just sort this out. Sorry, 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 Ben. This is uh, not acceptable, I know. Unbelievable. Everyone is, everyone is addressed to me. I Just reminded me, Matt, of something I meant to talk about weeks ago. I say weeks ago, I think I mean last week. When I was at the Beach Boys concert last s -s 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 Saturday. By the way, the music today, I'm going to make you guys work hard. If I've got to work, you've got to work. Nothing easy about the music this morning. So at the Beach Boys concert, there was an old guy in the front row, right, <laughs> dressed entirely in red. Crimson, he'd probably call it. It was like in his 60s or 70s. He looked like a lord, right? right? And he had red strides on. Beautiful. Um, like a pink shirt. Ooh. Red waistcoat. Oh. Red jacket. Beautiful. Red cravat. And like a, a hat. Got it gone to town. Well, he'd gone to town. He'd gone to town. And he obviously thought he looked smart. He wasn't, you know, he thought he looked smart. He was in the front row at the Beach Boys concert, and I was at the side, and I could see him. I have never seen anybody, until just now, you're the only two people I know, <laughs> who've clapped but completely missed the beat. <laughs> Com I mean, he completely... We'll get onto the story in a second, don't we? He completely <laughs> missed the beat of every single song that he was he was doing. And you just did the same thing. You just did exactly the same it thing. It was... Da -na -na -na. Right, so this is... Hang on a second, right? This is... This is, uh, this is what I had at the Royal Albert... This is what I was watching at the Royal Albert Hall the other day, right? So, so this, right. they're playing this, right? Everyone's going nuts. Perfect. And the guy's going... <laughs> He's missing every... He's missing every single beat. And you were just doing that then. How is that even humanly possible? The heart, the heart is God's metronome. Now, you've got to be able to hear the music in your head. Yes. It's a skill. If you, uh, no, you, it's not easy to hear the beat in a song and clap it, at the same time. It's easy it's to hear the like beat. It's trying to do this. Like, tap your head you and don't rub want to your know stomach at the same time. It's easy to hear the beat in this. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. He's playing the beat on drums and a bass guitar. It's easy. Oh, uh, yeah. 
If somebody says it with me, I can do it anyway. He then went on, he said, continuing to read Ollie's words, and voxed, what has fallen out of your body? <laughs> Fair play, that was, that was classic, just. <laughs> I've put part one, two and three in Ian's podcast audio. Lockers came in, I've got no idea what was going on. He was about to do a report, a very serious report, about Yarlswood, and he just showed me this big black thing on his finger. I went, what's that? He went, ooh, well, a bit of earwax has just fallen out my ear. Oh, it was horrible. Anyway, for some reason, he's recorded this. I work at BBC Three Counties Radio. Earlier, some earwax fell out of my ear while I was live on air. It was very embarrassing. I had to go and wash my hands. Uh, has anything fallen out of your body? No, 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 nothing like that, no. Thank God. So, I feel sorry for you, mate, but that's life, innit? Just have to soldier on. What time were you on air at? Uh, it was about uh, five past six this morning. Ah, uh, what programme were you doing? The breakfast show or something? Yeah, it was Ian Lee. Ah, uh, sorry about that. Anyway, I have to run now. You have Take to run care. now. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you for your thank you for your sympathy, man. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, wax regularly falls out of my ears. How frustrating is that? It's good because then you can hear better. Yeah. <laughs> when it falls out, is it when you're in social situations? Probably. Yeah. I'm trying to conceal it. Thank you very much. You know who that first guy was? That's old news. Yeah, legend. Ooh, fish fingers. Sorry? A lot of this podcast mainly features a feature that we featured this week in our feature slot called Lock Poker. Oh, we got a game. We didn't play this yesterday. Kels. Hello. Catherine. Yeah. Who's up for a game that we didn't play yesterday? Yeah. Thought I haven't got an advantage. I've literally just thought of it. Lock Poker. Oh. Who's up for a game of Lock Poker? Yep. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Go on. Okay. I start. I start. Um, Cows can go second because mm-hmm. you you know you can go third, and it goes round, and we each have to come up with a different type of lock. <laughs> okay. And then when you run out of locks, you're out. <clears throat> Last man standing. Mm-hmm. Padlock. Oh, that was going to be my one. Door lock. Right. I'll, okay. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Canal lock. Yeah. Oh. Scottish lock like in Loch Ness monster. Good game, isn't it? I got one. Oh, uh, Matthew Lockwood, does that count? Yeah, that counts. Right, so yeah. Headlock. Oh! oh! That's a good one. She's good, isn't she? Hemlock. Oh. Mm. Oh, you sorry? That was going to be my next one. Yeah? Mm? It's, you know what Hemlock is, yeah? Yeah, sure. Great, good, okay. Good, you'll go. Um, <clears throat> Lock po- You're listening to Lock Poker. And don't forget, in the sun, all this week, it's Bikini Week. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Kelly, over to you. Would you like a little bit of thinking time? Yes, please. OK. It's a good game, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. Really good game. Lock poker. I don't know how we're going to ever play again. Well, no, <laughs> you can only play this game once, and this is literally the first time I've ever oh, played oh, it. Oh, 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 I've got one, I've got one. Oh, hang on. Uh, 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 <clears throat> go. Goldilocks. Oh! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go, Kelly. Go, Kelly. Go, Kelly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good game. I'm going to need the thinking music. Oh, fl- Oh, I'm going to go out. I've never seen Kelly think so much. Look. I think that's Kelly's poo face. Ooh. Oh. We're stopping the clock. A locket. Huh? Oh. Yeah, OK, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What type of locket? One of them necklace ones. OK. What other types of locket are there? I'll tell you on my go. Oh, she's clever! She's good, isn't she? Yeah. She's learned from or us. Or is she? Let's wait till Our little go. girl's... D- I'm so <laughs> proud of her. She's learned our devious, devious ways. You're turning in. OK. I mean... I've got another one. Well, I'm in China. <laughs> in the 60s. Oh, no, no. What, you saying I can't have lock and lock? <laughs> You saying I can't have that? You can't have that. Oh, hello? What? Two thirty. No. Okay. <clears throat> Robbery. No. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, go Ricky, go Ricky, go Ricky. So my pub, you're all invited to a lovely lock-in. Beautiful. Yes, we have a you. Oh, look at Kelly pretending she's taking a phone call. No, it's all right. I put them on hold just to say lockets. 
Oh, Which so kind of lockets? Throats or wheats. Throats or wheats. <laughs> yeah. She said throats or wheats. <laughs> Isn't this more fun than it should be? I hope you're having as much fun at home as Here we are. Here you go. Yeah. My favourite office prank. Yeah. Caps lock. Oh! She played dirty. OK, I need to, to have a little bit of thinking music now. Hang on a second. What did we say yesterday when we played this? Huh? What? Hmm? Nothing. Sh- 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 music. What did I say yesterday? But you didn't get I this far with him. No, it didn't at all. Plums. Hmm. Hmm. Rasta Ferry, with me, Dreadlock. <laughs> Thanks, Chrissy. Shh. Oh. Kels, um, your turn. <clears throat> oh, we can take a little breakette for. Nope. No, we can't because uh, line Sorry. six is not lit up. Okay. Numlock. You mean numeric? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like. Kelly, you really bright on up my day. <laughs> I need the music. You, you can't, I tell you what we can have. We can have a little travel break. Good game, huh? Travel news. Hi, guys. We're playing Lock Poker. Well, you have to name as many different locks as you can. Kelly, you had the last go. Just remind us what you ended on. You don't remember, do you? Yeah, num lock. She <laughs> 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 means numeric. Lock. I said I would have said number lock. I think it's numeric. Don't matter. Well, I mean, it just, it's just it just says num lock. On num, my num, num. Right Birdie here. num nums. Yeah. Okay, Catherine, it's your turn. You were struggling before. But and you then think Sammy Brough inspired me. Here we go. Total grid luck. <laughs> oh, yeah! Well, the thing is, guys, I hate to break it to you, but there's an incident at a non-specific airport. There isn't really, guys, but there is for the purpose of this lock. Um, we believe that there are some very naughty people running around with things they shouldn't have, and so we're having to basically shut all the doors. This airport is under lockdown. Yay! Boom! You pushed the plunger. Oh gosh, I did. did I didn't. Honestly, and there, there are literally no plungers at any of the local airports. I don't think. I mean, you just can't tell these days. Kelly Betts. So you're playing rugby. Mm. Oh, she's been googling. No, you don't know. She rugby. wouldn't go. I trust this girl. I trust this girl. She brightens up my day. I sit next to this girl every day. Mm. I know how she works. There's different positions. Oh, wouldn't there? Including locks. It's true. Is that actually a position? Yes. yes. All right, fair play. I'm going to give her one. OK. When? It's my birthday. I'll, I'll decide. OK, so we're going into space with oh. the last humans alive. Oh, God, it's terrifying. Before we go, we need to decompress. We go through the airlock. Oh! <laughs> you like that? Yeah, I do like that, and I just don't know how I'm going to beat that. Oh, yeah, I do. With this one. It's the 1970s. <laughs> I, it's the 1970s. I'm a young man. Never had a girlfriend, but I've got feelings. Of course I have. It's biology. You can't argue with that stuff. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to have to think of someone. Who? Who? Oh, only 70s pin-up Heather Locklear. <laughs> Boom! Boom! She was 80s, if not 90s. I don't really know who she is. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't really know who she is. She was married to Richie Zambora. Oh, Richie Zambora. Mm. Mm. I've got um, Ian's phone. Yeah. Mm. I'm trying to hack into it. Oh. Of course you are. Can't. Phone lock. Oh! Oh, come on, that counts. It's more of a password lock, no? Password lock. Phone lock? Yeah, it's phone, never, your phone's locked. I've never heard the word phone lock yeah. before. Hang on a second. Shags! 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 Yeah. 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 Shags. Yeah. Shags! Huh? Would you allow phone lock? Yeah. Fair play, oh, it's in. Too nice. Thanks, it's it, it's in. The the walking okay. internet says yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, we'll have a cough, please, Shags. Yeah. Is it my go now? Yes, mate. Right. We didn't play this yesterday, did we? No, totally not. It's Get... the 80s. Yeah. One of the main crimes for bored teenagers. Ooh. A little bit of joyriding. Yeah. How do you prevent that happening for your Ford Fiesta? Oh, uh, we didn't have this one yesterday, no, did we? Di- di- didn't. Crook lock. We, 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 could, we couldn't have it yesterday because we didn't play it. Crook lock. Crook lock. <laughs> crook lock. <laughs> OK, well... Crook lock. The thing is, right, I can't afford a crook lock. I'm on the dole. 
I'll buy you one. No, I don't want you to buy me one. I'm on the door. I can't afford a crook lock. I'm on the door. I can afford my tabs. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing? And I can afford me um, uh, me square eel. <laughs> wow. I can afford me tabs and I can afford me square eel. I can't afford a crop lock, but I've got a car. But it doesn't matter because my car <laughs> has got an automatic steering lock on it. You're starting to sound a lot like my uncle's. I know. I've got a steering <gasps> oh, lock. This is so much fun. <laughs> Isn't this the best game ever? We're playing lock poker. <laughs> if you want to, by the way, guys, oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. If you want to jump in, this but is, don't tweet him no, because he's cheating. No, don't tweet. Well, if you want to jump in and play a joker for someone, so maybe you want to help Kelly Betts out. You've got one. Maybe you want to help Catherine Boyle out. Maybe you want to help me out. Hi, I'm Ian Lee. I'm the governor. Hmm? <laughs> uh, you can phone up oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. You nominate a player and you do their go for them. That's how we're uh, making this interactive. I've broken down the side of the road. Oh, mate, I'm sorry to hear that. I know. Uh, my tyre's uh, blown out. Oh, no. So to try and change it. A blowout on the motorway. Lock in wheel nut. Sorry? Lock in wheel nut. Don't swear. Hmm? Lock in wheel nut. Yeah, I'll give her that. I'll give her that one. Pressure's on you now, Kath. I need the music. Someone's, someone's calling in, so they might, they might be about to nominate you. Let's see. Let's see. Who are they going to nominate? They can nominate any player they want. They are. This is the BBC. You wouldn't get this on Coventry and Warwickshire. Here we go. Oh, uh, oh yes! OK, go, uh, OK, wouldn't it be funny if we got the same one at the same time? Right. OK. OK, then, boss. You've been having a really good time over the weekend. Uh, a really good time. Haven't they, large? You've been meeting some old friends. You've had a little bit of a chat. You've yeah. had a lot of a chat. Yeah. You've had so much chat that now you have... Oh! oh. Lockjaw. Oh, yeah! That's delicious. I want to just rub that one all over me. That is so delicious! I want to see... Kelly's talking to... Kelly, have you got someone who wants to, wants to play? Um, Ray wants to help me out. OK, is Ray on the line? No, he doesn't want to come on. Oh, Ray! Oh, he, just, he just wants to help you out. I don't yeah. think that's an offer for the game. Ray but Mondo? I'm not sure what he's saying exists. OK, well, it's my go. OK. Do you want what he's saying? No, cos I've got one, mate. All right. Oh, no, well... No, I've got one. If you choose to play Ray's suggestion and it's wrong, yeah. you're out. Yeah. OK. That's, yeah. Just a warning. I'm not going to play it. So, um... Ugh. I know these guys. They live in the woods. And just, they went out. There's a family, a mummy and a daddy and a little baby. Are they bears? Yeah, they're bears. Have I already said this one, mate? Yeah. Oh, no! Rewind! <laughs> anyway, another story. <laughs> Let me think about it. That really, really balls things up. Hang on. <laughs> Let me just think about it. Hang on. It carried on for the next half an hour. Humanoid. Thank you. So, my turn, my go. It's tricky. It's tough. It really is a hard case to crack. But the answer is elementary, dear Watson. Oh, no, you can't. Sherlock Holmes. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Simon's on the line. Morning, Simon. Morning. Would you like to nominate a player? I would, yes. Who would you like Kelly. to nominate? You're nominating Kelly. It's Kelly's turn now. Kelly, Simon is nominating you. What's up, player? Now you have to, without knowing what he's going to say, say whether you're going to play his suggestion or go alone. Yeah, are you going to play, Simon, or are you going to play with yourself? <laughs> <laughs> so childish. I'm really sorry. Who's that? Simon, have you been listening to the whole entire thing? Uh, not the whole entire uh. thing, but I, I doubt very much oh. that this one has been said because oh. it would probably be a bit too technical. Oh, he's a boffin! We've got scientists listening to us. My right, mum will be so, so proud. Do you know what? I'm going to go... I'll play it, Simon. Play it. Uh, OK, then. Matchlock. Sweet. We haven't had that, have we? Well, what, yeah, but what does it mean, Good Simon? Enough. Matchlock is a firing mechanism for a musket... He's right. Which, Beautiful. ..which um, stopped you using the uh, taper to light it. Ever shot a man, Simon? Uh, yeah. Wow. Well, that escalated, didn't it? It took a dark turn, didn't it? <laughs> we won't go any further, Simon. But Simon is calling us uh, whilst on the run. Excellent stuff. You're through, Kelly. Well Thank done. You. Yvonne? Yes? Who would you like to nominate? 
Catherine. Yes. Oh, Catherine. Well, you know the rules. Are you going to, without hearing it, are you going to um, go with Yvonne or are you going to uh, play with yourself? Can I ask the question? Yvonne, have you heard the whole thing? Uh, most of it, yeah. How confident are you feeling? Okay. Fairly confident. OK. OK, is... uh, I'm going to trust Yvonne. Here we go, Yvonne. What, what's, your lo- what's your lock in lock poker? <laughs> lock poker? <laughs> Well, we're going down the motorway and all of a sudden you come to a gridlock. Oh, Oh, Yvonne! Yvonne. You obviously weren't listening to all of it. I'm afraid afraid Catherine Boyle is out, Yvonne. Oh, no! Thanks for playing. I like the way you told the story and I like the way you got Catherine out. Boyle, you all right, mate? You all right, Boyles? I asked she, you if you are listening, what would do it? She's out of the game. It carried on for the next hour. It, I'll be honest, it went on for the whole show. And, and then it went on, people tried to carry it on for the next two shows. And today we've got some as well. Oh, man yeah. alive. Lock poker. Now, we've got two people that want to help. We've got Steve. Good morning, Steve. Hello. And we've got Kate. Morning. Now, Catherine, you can only pick... No, I'm no. making this up off the hoof. I don't know if you know... Uh, you can only pick one of either Steve or Kate to help you. If their word that they give us is invalid, i.e. it's been used before or it's made up, then you uh, are actually dead. You, you'd have to take off a piece of clothing. It... <laughs> can we can we pitch for her to choose? Yeah. Oh, please do. Yeah. Uh, Kate, and you, you pitch first. I have got a quadruple whammy for you. It will bring you back in the game with a bang. Oh, you're tickling my fancy, Kate. <laughs> she is. I can see her fancy and it's been tickled. <laughs> Steve, what have you got to offer me? Just trust a man to get the job done, Kath. Oh, I like well, that that's... kind. You know that sexism always works really well with me. <laughs> it's going to go down well, Steve. <laughs> Catherine, who are you going to choose, Steve Kate. or Kate? Of course I'm going to go for the uh, the quadruple offering from Kate. OK, uh, Steve, stay there because we might still use your services. Don't let me down, Kate. Kate, what have I you got? Well, being a horsey girl myself, oh, we yeah. have horses, of course, the obvious choice was saw lock. Oh! It's Catherine is back, Kate. Excellent work indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. The Forelock. We've got a celebrity coming up for the next time around who wants... uh, Well, uh, let's bring him into the game. Ladies and gentlemen, it's local councillor. It's Tom Shaw. Good morning, Tom. Morning, Ian. Tom, have you not got anything better to do, mate? (laughs) On the way to work, mate. On the way to work. Now, you... It's me you want to help, is it? Yeah, why not? Oh, oh. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was me. No. But I'll it, let you have him. No, right. Who, well, who do you want to play? It's Kelly's turn now, Tom Shaw. Who would you like to, to play with? Kelly, she's the best looking of all. It, isn't she just? Isn't she just? She is, fair She play. is. She is hot. OK, Kelly, it's Tom Shaw. He's a local councillor. He's a firebrand. He's a little bit feisty. He's always honest and direct when he cho- chooses to come on. Mm. Now... Are you going to go with Tom Shaw, or are you not? I've got my own one. Oh, Tom! All right, Tom, Tom, stay on the line, because someone will play with you, I promise. Kelly, what's yours? Clock. Oh, no. No. I mean, scroll lock. <sighs> well, we've got to accept your first answer. I'm... Um, uh... You're out of the game. Oh, come on, clock's funny. Clock is... Uh, your clock doesn't clock. go... Right, you're out you're of the game, but I'm going to allow Tom Shaw local dignitary and... Uh, 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 if he chooses to, after your ungrateful oh. attitude, frankly. Tom, would you like to reanimate Kelly Betts? You yeah. can't see, but I literally... Definitely. I just winked at you. OK, he, he say, he's saying yes. Tom, Thanks, what man. word, what lock would you like to throw down on the lock poker table to help bring Kelly back in the game? Lock of me. Oh, controversial! You had to indeed. mention Lockerbie. It's uh, it's it's valid. We're all a little bit speechless, but of course, Lockerbie is a beautiful, beautiful place. Absolutely, a beautiful place, tainted by tragedy. But uh, let's not forget that it's a wonderful place, Tom. Uh, what's what's uh, on the council table today, Tom? What are you sorting out? Housing. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you're a good sport. Thank you for calling in. Oh, mate, you missed oh, Pete. Oh, I know. We I know. were gutted. Do you know what? I'm glad. Last week, I kind of heard a rumour he was coming in this week, and I'm glad that I wasn't here for it. Well, him. guess what? Go on. He's going to come back in. Yeah, You're taking him to the streets of Dunstable. I've, I've seen the videos of what he did, and do you know what? I was away on the holiday, and for the whole day, I was sitting on the beach, and he completely messed with my mind. Yeah, he's, he was amazing, wasn't he? And do you know what? He came in in a taxi. How did he come in in a taxi? Because he can make 20 quid. Uh, good point. And I gave him a few quid as well. You did, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, anyway, he was brilliant, and he came in and did this. 
This is more. This is more of a sort of warm-up one. It's like a psychological thing, a sort of Darren Brownie kind of thing. So basically, what that means is yeah. that it might not work. Uh, <laughs> but, but no, um, basically, if it yeah. doesn't work, we will think less of you. Of you course. Know that. Well, that's that's kind of uh, how these things work, isn't it? Um, but so basically, I have here. Oh, I'm nervous. He's going to be maths. Uh, no, no, I have here a die or a dice. If you're wrong, <laughs> um, <laughs> English degree. Um, all I got out of it was that joke. Um, right, I have here a dice. So I've got basically six different numbers. Um, yeah. I'm going to give that to you. Catherine, yep. there you go. Um, in fact, just for the listeners, that's a dice rolling it's, it's, or a it's die. A, it's quite a big Come on. die, uh, yes. So basically, here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to get you to put it in your hand uh -huh. with any number on top. So say if you did that, you'd mm. be choosing six. six yeah. uh, but whatever, uh, I'm going to turn away so okay. that I can't see what you've got. Oh, no, hold on, wait, wait, don't do it yet, because I'm, I'm still looking. But So you put it, you put it in, your, in your hand with one number on top. You're going to then cover it with your other hand. So yep. it, you can let Ian see it, okay. just don't let me see it. Okay. So when I turn back, you're here like this, so I can't see through oh, your hands and right. can't see what you've gone for. OK, um, I'm going to turn away. He's turned away. Let okay, he's turned away. Okay, she's showing me the number. She's put it up. Okay, right. You, you can turn back okay. now, Pete. Okay, so you, uh, yeah, you covered it up. Yeah, 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 yeah it's okay. covered. Now the listeners uh, who are listening online will be able to go back and verify this to check. Uh, I was influ I was hopefully influencing you with what I was saying. The last thing I said before I turned away was, "Let me know when you've got one," and I said one at the end of the sentence. Hopefully, that would have made you choose a number one. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. You remember what? Well, brilliant. Ah, okay. Cool. That's such a dope. <laughs> Kelly, come in, come in, come in, come in, right. Kelly, come and watch this. Come and okay. watch this. And, and you know, that sounds like nonsense. Like, how could that possibly have worked? But you yeah. can just check. You can listen back. You can check. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. She did have um, the number one, guys. Okay. Um, Kelly's uh, coming in to verify this. Okay. Um, come in, come in, all right. Come in. Now, but maybe that's just luck. Maybe everyone goes for one the first time for some weird reason. All right. So, I mean, they don't, but maybe they do. Okay. So I'm going to turn away. We're going to try that again. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. and he's he's turned away. He cannot see. A bit differently this time. I'm not looking. Can she show us the number? Yep, sure. Okay, she's showing us the number. You see that, Kelly? Okay, okay. he's not looking. He cannot no. see. Okay, can I turn back? Yes, yeah. you can. All right. Okay, and there's no way I can see that, right? Right. Um, okay, I'm gonna. This time, this is more. F this, the listeners can play along here as well. I'm gonna ask you: Is it one? Is it two? And so on, up to, up to six. Each time, I want you to say no. Okay. okay. I feel so nervous. Now, one of these times, you're going to be lying, obviously, because right. it is one of the numbers, yeah. I'm assuming. Um, and there's something really weird happening. But no, um, so I'm going to... So, for, so you know what you've got to do, you just got to say no each time. Okay, so is it one? No. Is it two? No. Is it three? No. Is it four? No. Is it five? No. Is it six? No. Okay, now based on that, I think when I got to three, um, there was a sort of slight more of a smile than before and a little pause. Um, hopefully, I'm like, did you go for three? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's okay. just nuts, Brilliant. man. All right, okay, so that's twice. If I can do it three times in a row, I'm going to consider myself a lanky genius. All right, <laughs> uh, all right so, so one more time, we'll okay. do it a bit differently again. She's showing us the number. Okay, okay we've got I'm the number. He cannot see. He's turned away. Okay, go. Okay, cool. Now, um, I, I'm not looking. I didn't say anything this time, right? Uh, and I, would keep, I kept gesturing, saying, I'm not looking. Can you see what my hand's oh, doing here? Can, uh, can you describe what my hand's doing? He's got his hand <laughs> up so I can see five fingers. I'm, I'm, show, I'm showing, uh, without, without, I'm gesturing, just gesturing, saying I'm not looking, that but I'm holding freaky. up a big number five with my hand in it um, to cover, sort of, to cover the, the, the die. Uh, did you go for five? Is yeah, that right? Of Brilliant. I okay, cool. Just Thank you very much. Freaky, okay, man. cool. So um, that's three in a row. We oh, if it. only uh, Dealey was here, that would, that would crucify him. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, thank you. Very How much. did you do that? Um, magic. <laughs> magic. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I mean, I was actually telling you I did it all along. That's incredible. Um. Oh, Kyle. Oh, it's your fancy man. Oh, Kyle and Kath sitting in a tree. B no, K I S S I N G. Yeah, what of it? Yeah, what? Kyle, are you there, mate, or have you dropped off again? No, morning, boss. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll let I'll let you and your mank girlfriend um, get on with it. Me and Kells will keep out of this. The Cockneys are keeping quiet. What have you got for me, Kyle? Well, I've got one. And I, got Is it battered of... sausage? Unbelievable. Don't be crude. Have you got battered sausage for me? Hey, Kyle, it's Tuesday. you got listen, battered sausage listen, for me, love. Listen. Have you got battered sausage for me, love? Don't be jealous. I want your battered what, sausage. What Kyle and I have is beautiful and pure. I know. It's beautiful battered sausage. There's no sausage involved. Give Kyle. me your battered... Kyle, give us your battered sausage, love. <laughs> Go on, and I'll do wash it for you. Throat mango. Ignore him. It's, he's just um, bitter because it's his birthday. No one's remembered. Right. Oh, oh yeah. right, all oh, right. But battered sausage for birthday. Hey, don't worry, not got birthday kit, but I've got battered sausage with candle on. That'll do. Right, Carl, give, well, give us your battered right. sausage for battered sausage pocket. Do, do, do you want battered sausage, Ian, for your birthday? He'd love one. <laughs> he would love one. Oh, yeah. on. Carl, go on. 
Right, OK, so the one that I had, uh, actually, is uh, centred around one of your presenters. Now, I'm not sure whether it meets the rules or not. Well, the rules are very flimsy. Uh, and it's right, you, well, Kyle. So Well, well I've, I've, got, I've got in my head, like, I'm in Batley. Yeah. I'm thinking Alan Bennett and Thora Heard. <laughs> Yeah, and then one of your, uh, one of your, I don't know, present reporters is there. Yeah. And he says, oh, I'm having a lovely, lovely macaroon. Thanks, Thora. And it is, of course, Matt Lockwood. Yes. Um, the Lockwood. Matt Lockwood. Lockwood. Yeah. I, did, I said that. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. listen, battered sausage. Listen, <laughs> I've got battered sausage. And this is battered barn cake. Take this back to the shop, Carl, and get money back or you're sleeping out in the doghouse tonight, our oh, lads. Ian, leave this to me. Kyle, oh, it's, just... it's not me, it's you. We're done. What have you got for us, shouty Chris? Voyage to the bottom of the sea, 1960s, David Lockhart. We certainly have not had that. We've certainly not had Lockhart, no. Chris, you, you are the last player on today's. And a player's going to play. You win uh, the last 20 seconds of the show, Chris. Over to you. Welcome to BBC Radio Three Counties, and this is the Chris's 20 seconds of the show. And I'm listening all week, yeah! <laughs> Well, some might say that she wasted eight of those 20 seconds, but you never know. Um, oh, OK, this is a serious one. Kath, can you do a serious one? All right. Right. On what Don't day start it? it with right. Hang on, I'm just trying, trying to set my uh, brain in the right mode. Okay. What day is it today? Thursday, right. On Wednesday, we spoke to a gentleman called Kevin Lane. Originally from Bedfordshire, he'd spent 20 years in prison for a murder he says he didn't commit. He's going to the Court of Appeal. He's going to try and get his sentence quashed. Here's what happened. So your claim is that you didn't do it and, and there was corruption and we know that there was a corrupt copper involved. Yeah. How come over the past 20 years then, you say you've got all this evidence um, that you hadn't been... Because you've not been released, have you? You've been, you've been let out on... What's, what's the phrase? Parole. You've been let out on licence. So I'm on parole, yeah. OK. So you're, you're still effectively, in the eyes of the law, Kevin, listen carefully, you're still effectively, in the eyes of the law, guilty of that murder. How come in the last 20 years your, um, your legal team weren't able to bring any of this evidence to an appeal? Well, I went to the Criminal Cases Review Commission, which is the, uh, the commission was set up to investigate such matters. However, these it's amazing how you can be arrested and taken to trial in six months, yet investigations to release you can take up to nearly four years, which was almost the case of my last investigation. I found out that during one of my investigations at the CCRC that the Chief Constable of Police of Hertfordshire Police, who was in office at the time of my arrest, was one of the 14 commissioners. And they wrote to me and they said, thank you for your representations. They're very well argued, very well put together. If we didn't think there was some prospect of referring your case back to the Court of Appeal, we would have closed it by now. We intend to have a meeting in the next two weeks and discuss how we're taking your case forward. 20 days later, I received a letter and they shut my case. So I made some investigations of my own and I found out what I've just told you about the Chief Counsel of Police. Why did they and hold on, hold on, and the, and the CCRC oh. wrote back to me and they said it was inevitable that staff within the CCRC knew the police involved in your case okay. or knew someone who knew them. So you're suggesting... What charge do you stand? You're suggesting... Oh, it's factual. No, Kevin, please let me finish the sentence, mate. Mm. You don't know what my question's going to be. You're suggesting... The, the, uh, your case never went to appeal because of corruption in the police force? I am, yes. Okie dokie. Um, and your solicitor's been working on this the last 20 years? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you one more part in, and you, this is factual, OK, as well. In your opinion? No, it's factual. We've got it in writing. OK, it's not well, my did, opinion. well, well I, I've not seen any of this in, in, in writing, but go on. Well, I'm, I'm telling you it's factual. Well, 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 OK, Kevin, Kevin <laughs> I, don't, well, I don't know if you're... You've well, been in prison well, for 20 years or not. I don't know if you're telling in, the truth I wouldn't be a fool to state such things over the phone or now. Well, so please be with me. Well, Bear with me on well, this. Well, no, factual. Kevin, Kevin... Uh, <laughs> Kevin... Well, I'm telling you it's factual. Yeah, I know I've you're telling me it's factual, mate. That won't cover me if I get hauled up for libel, so just be careful, please. Oh, right, no problem. Well, I received a letter... Uh, this is fact from the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal instructed yeah, I don't, the Kevin, I've not seen any of these documents, no all right? No problem. All right. Just well, be you, really careful, because it will be no me problem. that gets hauled up in front of court for being, li for being libelous. So just, right. you know, please, I, when, I, when I'm being cautious, understand I'm covering your backside, I'm covering the BBC's backside, more importantly, I'm covering mine, OK? OK. Away you go. OK. Uh, the Court of Appeal instructed an investigation into some anonymous documents that were sent to my solicitor. Uh, Part of that investigation was an undercover operation to go to the files that they came from. 
We didn't know about the undercover operation. However, my solicitor received a phone call from an anonymous source and said those files that those that the documents came out of were being searched by undercover police officers. We went directly to the Court of Appeal, who subsequently confirmed that there was an undercover operation. Okay, the police officers that was investigating them were of high echelons within the Hertfordshire Police. Twenty days after they'd been into those files, they wrote back to the court in writing and said there was a conflict of interest because the officer they were investigating, which, which was a corrupt police officer, was a former colleague of theirs. And one of them had been tutored by him for two years. No one's denying. This is fact. So what happened was No one's denying, that, Kevin. I'm going to yeah. interrupt because we're going off and I don't uh, mm. no one's denying that there was there was a corrupt police officer involved in this. You shouldn't have their colleagues investigating them. It should be an independent police force. Well, that's, that, that, that's by the by. The, the Is no it really? Mm. OK. Fair comment. You're welcome to your comment. By the by, it should have been an independent police officer. Police force. Not a former colleague. No one is denying, Kevin. By the way, I would... I, can I make a suggestion? You can, certainly. Thank you very much. I would just suggest... What, is it... What, what, are you going to the High Court today? I am, yeah. Yeah, OK. Just maybe, just I don't listen. The attitude of me, I don't mind at all. I would tone the attitude down a little bit in court, but you probably I might know equally that. say the same to you, Ian, because you come across a little bit bullshy and uh, quite, quite. Kevin, you don't come across quite as laid back as you, and I thought you might do, as other presenters have been. No, you, you, yeah, you, exactly. You thought I'd be going, hey, you're, you, you never committed this. Um, you, you, what a terrible injustice. I don't know, Kevin. I don't know. It's just I'm like questioning question you. Comes across a little bit more aggressive than what you yeah, thought good. you might have been. Thank you very much. I take that as a compliment. Good. Um, I'm, you're welcome. This is going well. I'm just suggesting, Kevin, that when you're in court, that just, you know, that, that attitude isn't going to help you. But you, you'll know that. You, you've probably been advised that. I won't be giving evidence to court. OK, well, that, I think that'll probably, you know, do you the world of good. Listen, I, 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 you know, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you, ta you, appreciate you taking a robust question. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I've got no idea. And if you're innocent and uh, you've, been, you've served 20 years, then, man alive, I hope you get well rewarded and I hope you get uh, paraded around the town as, as being, uh, you know, an injustice by our legal system. I really, really do. Ian, might I just say, if you were to place yourself in my position, OK, imagine how you would feel every time someone comes across and hits you with those questions because the frustrations yeah, be, of 20 years it's inevitable that it's going it to come out and I, I understand mean that. To, you know i don't mean to come across that but no i understand my your position, you know i've had to suffer this for 20 years yeah. you know it's, and my families have suffered it my friends and my supporters so sometimes it, 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 it is difficult to I answer questions that. I okay? and i'm not that, that i'm not I, I apologize to you if i've come across like that but equally i do feel you know you have to have give you some tough questions but I Thank do you. feel like, you know, it could have been a little bit easier on both of us. It, it, it could have been, Kevin, but that's not my job, mate. No, you can ask the questions, but how you ask them at times, you know, you're not a barrister, okay. that's all. No, 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 I know, but Kevin, uh, you, uh, <laughs> all right, listen, I, I, I appreciate that. If you are indeed innocent, then, of course, you must be incredibly frustrated. And I, 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 if you are innocent, I wish you the very, very best of luck, and I hope it all goes your way. Thank you very much. For a thousand miles away. Keep going. Yeah, let's do this. That's it, that's it, that's it. Can they overcome six weeks of hair-raising challenges? Oh, I can't do it. And will their partner back home keep them in the competition? Are you feeling pressure? Just a tad. They're prized apart. But in it together. Prized Apart begins this Saturday night from 7 on BBC One and BBC One What HD. that is, is that's one of those shows where they thought of the title, then worked backwards. What about a show called Prized Apart? I bet it's spelled P-R-I-Z-E-D. Prized Apart. Well, OK, it's a great idea, for a great title. What do we do with it? Well, they win prizes. Couples. And they're apart. OK, what, what, what do you mean? The one's on different side of the studio. No, different town. I'm liking it. Think bigger. Thousand miles away. You just got yourself 20 episodes primetime Saturday night. I've got one. Separated at birth. Hey! You get a couple who can't stand each other anymore. They're separated. At birth? You put them no. on a cruise ship, yeah. right? Yeah. They have to share a bunk. It's called a berth. I've got one. And you watch the fireworks. Separated. <laughs> You're not allowed fireworks on the boat, mate. Separated at birth, OK? Oh. It's a couple. She's pregnant. They fall out the week that he, she's due to, to pop it out. They are separated at birth. And then he has to guess which one's his child. Boom, you've got it. No, and if he successfully, yep. you know, he gets to this go back great. with her. OK, here's another one. It's oh. got to be called separated at birth. OK. Separated at birth. <laughs> Hello, Here we go. Uh, separated at birth. Here we go, yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. Have you got an idea for a show called Separated at Birth? 08459 four double five five double five. We're the BBC. We can make dreams come true. You tell a couple they've won a luxury holiday. Yeah. We're back on oh, the cruise ship. Look, yeah. I've already paid for the cruise ship. Oh, yeah. I booked it. Yeah. We're yeah. going to use it. You tell them they're going on a luxury holiday. I love. I know where this is going. I love it. They're really lovely, Dovey. Yeah. He's the really nice husband that you hate because yeah. he's not as good as yours, right? Uh, so I'm not get him married in there. to that guy anymore. All right. So she's the perfect wife. I hated him. Yeah. Anyway. It wasn't legal when we they're, married. They're either. like really kind of. Yeah. Anyway, they're sick makingly happy, this couple. Yeah. We ruin their lives. We put them on the ship, there's not enough room for both of them. Yeah. Which one goes on the trip? I like it. He has to decide. Here's my idea for a show. It's called Separated at Birth. OK. Good title. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Kelly. Um, OK. Someone really clever came up with that. So what it is, is a couple get a family. Let's involve kids. A family is given a, what they believe is going to be a luxury holiday, right? Why? It's pro like proper family with a mum and a dad and two kids. They like a girl. each other. Proper, it's a proper family. None of this nonsense. Right. It's called separated at birth. They are they are given what they think is going to be a luxury holiday. Yeah. They turn up. The, all they've got is um, it's a it's a caravan site where I believe that where the caravans are pitched, I think they're called berths. I'm hoping so. Otherwise, no. yes, they're called berths. No, just pretend. They are no. We don't need to pretend, mate, because they're called berths. Where it, can Seeing I, it over and over doesn't make it so. Can I get a caravaner on the line, please? Uh, because a caravan, you park a caravan in a caravan berth. No. Where do you think you park it? In a plot. <laughs> a plot? You're thinking of Agatha Christie. Go on, anyway. No, what what happens to this family? Uh, they've, I don't know. They've either got to build a caravan, or when they get there, they're told that half of them are going on a luxury holiday, half of them got to stay in a rubbish caravan, and the, the youngest kid decides who he loves the most, okay. his mum or his dad. Here's the other one. Separated at Mirth. That doesn't fit into oh, the criteria. On. We're not doing puns. With the, with the success of Separated at Birth, they're yeah. going to want something else. Separated yeah. at Mirth, yeah. right? A Tidville. Husband and wife. So, just say the title again, because I'm being funny. Separated at Mirth. A Tidville. It's a place in Wales. Yeah. That's it, my show. It doesn't have to be there. You can't have that. Right. Anyway, they're really happy. Or so they think, because the husband's about to play a massive trick on her yeah. that's going to lead to mirth for some yeah. and, and, and mirth for and, others. And death for others. It, yeah. Mirth or Mirtha. Mm. Kelly. I've, I've got an idea. Yeah, what's it called? Um, it's called Separated at Birth. I like that title. Yeah. It's um, a couple of babies who are, like, t torn apart and their limbs are all swapped. Whoa! So stop! You've got, no, no, wait, so you've got, like, a small little baby with giant hands. Um... And then you just swap all their parts about. Do you want to do the on-air apology, Kath? You and probably should. No babies have been hurt well. in the making of this idea, but Kelly will be. Thanks very much indeed. Morning, I, I, I'm, 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 str I'm losing the will to live, Jake, so... Uh, um, uh, uh, I've got an idea for a, for a TV show. Yeah, what's it called? Oh, uh, Separated at Birth. I like the title. What happens in it? Uh, well, you're following the lives of 101 Dalmatians that are separated at birth. When's it on? No idea. Oh, well, I can't set me Sky Plus, because that's... A, that. How long does this series run for? 101 days. I mean, thank you, Jake! Oh, by the way... Dinosaurs, what's the point? I mean, come on, that mm. is just... Come well on, done, Evolution, is... well done. Great yeah. to have you back, Josh. Well, the thing is, you know, when it comes to dinosaurs, I need to see them in front of me to believe. You know, all, all I've seen all my oh, life is cartoons in Jurassic Park. I need cartoons. to see to believe. But no, hang on a minute. So you're hang on. Are you saying you don't believe in dinosaurs? I'm I just saying. I'm just saying. No, I'm saying I do believe. I do believe. But it's. I don't know. It's like talking about. It's like saying. Yeah. It's like having an opinion on a country that you've never been to. All right. Hang on a minute. You but believe in ghosts? ghosts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both. And I've seen time. ghosts. Not the film. No, not the film, but I have had spooky experiences. Not Casper. <gasps> not Casper, no. <laughs> but but spooky things have happened to me. I've never seen a dinosaur. Mm. How do you know the spooky things happening to you aren't actually dinosaurs? Well, dinosaur no, ghosts. Oh, good point, well made. Have a listen to this. Justin, Dinosaurs. There's a new Jurassic Park film out. I was asked to go on an ITV talking head show to talk about Jurassic Park. I said, I'm going to stop you there. Great pitch. Thanks very much. I've never seen a Jurassic Park film. The people, they said, what? I've never seen one. They said, we can give you the films on DVD. I said, I don't want to watch them. Why? Dinosaurs are boring. And a waste of time. They're yeah, such a waste, of time, a waste of time. Well, I've been on the streets already this morning. The vibe is strong out there. Are dinosaurs a waste of time? Here's what happened. Sir, dinosaurs. A waste of time? Interesting topic, but you can discuss. Yep, interesting topic, let's discuss. Dinosaurs, waste of time? 
for a while. We can discuss. It's not yeah, yeah let's discuss. So, dinosaurs, uh, waste of time? No, it's not waste of time. Who's your favourite dinosaur? T-Rex. Jamie, how old are you? I'm, I'm seven. Jamie, dinosaurs. The boss back in the studio says they're a complete and utter waste of time. What do you think? Um, nah. Who's your favourite dinosaur? Um, my favourite dinosaur is a T-Rex. <laughs> What's so good about T-Rex? Um, cos they have, um, um, so many teeth. That's the, um, best bit. That's a great answer. Thanks for your time. How are you, Governor? Lovely beard. I'm all right, thanks. Good stuff. Dinosaurs, are they a complete and utter waste of time? All depends on your opinion. What's some your people, opinion? Some people think they were real, some people don't think they were real. What do you think, real or fake? Put it uh, out there. Well, they found dinosaur uh, skeletons, so they must be real. OK. Apart from T-Rex, who's your favourite dinosaur? One with a big, great big uh, scale on its back. I forget which one that is now. Scaly back. That sounds like one of my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> Sounds like one of mine and all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the very best call of the week! Best call of the week. Oh, no, mate. Unless time. someone comes on on Friday. They won't. Good morning. How are you in? I'm all right, thank you. What, what have you got for us? Well, it was me that sent in the text about Keith Moon. Did you go to school with Mooney? I went to two schools with him. I went to Barham, which was our primary school. Yes. And then he moved to Alfton uh, High, uh, Secondary Modern. Yeah. Uh, and then he moved from there to Harrow Technical College. Guys, can we just cancel the rest of the show? I'm talking to Mark about his Keith Moon memories, OK? Yeah. Um, uh, but, but, and how, so how old would you have been, Mark, when you, uh, when you were with him? Well, we were... Uh, from the age of six right through to 16. Fantastic. So he knows all. He knows all. I mean, he did... He, he used to be in the local seat, Wembley Sea Cadet Corps. He was a bugler. Yeah. Um... He did play for a couple of bands before um, he played for the the Who. I can't remember their names. He was in a I... surf band, wasn't he? He used to love surf music. He did. He was a big fan of the Beach Boys and Jan and Dean. That's correct. Uh, and so did you hang out with him, Mark? Yeah, he was crazy. What was he? Now listen, because no, was he, he was crazy young. even then, or was it a bit of a put on when he no, became a rock no, star? He was, no, he was at Keith. They were a lovely family. Um, yeah, quite a few brothers and sisters. Yeah. But he was an absolute... He was a nutcase. Yeah. From, from, his, from early days. And was it a bit tired? Because I, 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 as I get up, when I was a young man, right, the whole Keith Moon story used to fascinate me. I used to think, oh, brilliant, driving a Rolls Royce into a swimming pool. Doing a, <laughs> there's a fa very famous story of it, him um, being, like, in the 30th floor of a hotel room. Uh, and everyone's going, Where, where's, where's... They're all t doing, you know, whatever it was they were doing. And about 2 o'clock in the morning, where's Keith? So he said, where's, where's Keith? Keith, has anyone seen where Keith's gone? And he looked out the window and he was just stood out there holding on to the ledge like in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, and as a young man, I found that very exciting. As I get older, I think, oh, that would have just worn me out. It would have been tiresome, yeah. yeah. It would have been, oh, Keith, please, go to bed. No, I mean, he was quite disruptive at school, put it that way. Really? Was yeah, he, he was one of the naughty boys. And, and did you ever see him when he became, like, proper famous? Uh, I never went to any of his concerts, yeah. um, but I did meet him probably when the Who were at their top. His mother and father still lived in Chaplin Road in Wembley. Yeah. Um, and he was with his wife, and I can't remember what her name was, although I think he got married... I'm trying to think. Um, I know he got married and had a child, but I can't remember oh, I her I can't name. remember her name either. And it's sad. And it's sad. It was sad. He was sad, but he was very. He was what would be described today as a hyperactive child. Yeah, yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah, of course he would. There, there would be a label for for it. Yeah. Mark, listen, best call of the day, mate. You've you've won a gold star. You can come on any time you want. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, that's exciting. Oh hey, I'm adding another bit in of the Jay McDonald's oyster. Let's listen to it now. Oh, okay. Celebrities eating. When have you seen a celebrity when you or they have been eating? We've got a full, and thank you, Kelly Betts, for this, a full men who. A full men who. Let's go. Catherine, can we go through the men who, please? The four members of the who. Where, what were they eating? Oh, God, I don't know. I've not written it down. Pete Townsend, ham, egg and chips. Oh, yeah. Hello. Keith and he Moon. Was very deep. Keith Moon, school dinners. 
Roger Daltrey. Dundee cake. <laughs> and John Entwistle, a pint and a pie. Ladies Lovely. and gentlemen, it's the who. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh so much. I mean, it does. But the food befits the character, doesn't, doesn't it? Doesn't it just? Doesn't it just? Uh, Cyril's on the line. Morning, Cyril. Uh, morning to you. What have you got for us, Cyril? Uh, well, I've met the who uh, twice before and after a gig, but I've also oh. met um, uh, John Entwistle uh, by himself um, at my mate's house. He, my mate always <laughs> said that he was, uh, it was his cousin. And, uh, and I thought, well, yeah, OK, yes, his cousin, you know, you know, yeah. carry on, mate. And then I was round his house one lunchtime and this Rolls Royce turned up and <laughs> out come John Entwistle walked into his house and, you know, said, hi, Nigel. And I went, I was just, like, shocked at it all. like. And he just he sat down, he had a cup of tea and a cheese and onion sandwich. <laughs> John uh, Entwistle loves the sandwiches. Yeah, he cheese and onion sandwich. The other time was in the Civic Hall Dunstable yes. before their gig back in 1971. Oh, yeah. I, and I did not realise it was... Was them at first. I mean, I've seen the Who 27 times myself. All right, mate, calm down. And, uh, Blimey. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're the best. They're the best. And uh, I, they, they were all there having drinks and everything. And I, I went up and chatted to them. And I ended up having a couple of pints with them. Yeah. Where the, um, they were eating um, cheese and onion crisps and what's lager. This, what's their obsession with cheese and onion and no, lager? No, no, hey, no. Cyril, did you see um, uh, the Who? They did Quadrophenia as part of the um, uh, Teenage Cancer Trust concerts about six years ago at the Royal Hub Did you see that? No, I didn't see oh, that mate. one. I, 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 I saw the Who just a couple of months ago at the because, um, uh, O2. I tell you, I tell you what, Cyril. The young gentleman that got to introduce the Who on stage. Mm. Yeah, that was me! That was, was me! I got to start. <laughs> this is brilliant. I got to. Because uh, I worked at another radio station that worked with Roger on the, the Teenage Cancer yeah. Trust concerts. And they were always trying to get me to go and introduce bands, like rubbish bands, like the spin off of, um, of Suede. Like, and I was like, yeah. I don't want to do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And they said, well, how would you like to introduce on stage. Um, the Liam Gallagher band, what were they called? Oh. oh well. BDI. BDI. <laughs> I said, I'm not bothered, thanks. They said, oh, OK. Shay, because you could have introduced the other band that was on that night. I said, who's the other band? And they went, um... It's the Who. I said, I'll do it. I said, yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. So I got to go on stage, and I was doing the talk of... Oh, guys, it's such an honour to introduce the Who. And there are all these, gob these gobby people in the audience, right? And this bloke's go bloke in the front went, you're not a real Who fan. I said, I beg your pudding. He said, you're not a real Who fan. Name a Who song that isn't an obvious one. I went in there, Cyril, straight away with Go Goodbye... On. I went in there with Goodbye Sister Disco, right? All right, yeah. Right, OK. Yeah. He went, no, nah, that's too famous. I went, right, <laughs> have some of this. And then I started singing Bucket Tea. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, that one. Yeah, that Bucket Tea from the Ready Steady Who EP from 1965. That shut him up. He, yeah, he, that, probably, he probably didn't know. He probably didn't. I, I out -hooed him. And then later <laughs> on that evening, Cyril, here we go. <clears throat> Picture the scene. The Royal Albert Hall, OK? There's, there's, oh, how does it hold? Let's, let's, let's say 5,000 people. They're all there. They're all waiting, OK? They've seen, they've seen BDI. They, let's be honest, they're not a particularly good band, OK? So I walk out. <clears throat> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to the stage... Not just one of the best rock and roll bands in the world. The best. The best rock and roll band in the world. The Who! Oh, the Who came out on stage. I introduced The Who uh, on stage at the Royal Albert Hall. And your feelings? Oh, mate, it was a... I'll be honest, there was a slight... There was a delay of about two minutes of them coming out, OK? Right, yeah. But in that meantime, I went backstage, and I'd been backstage all night, and I'd seen them walking around, but I hadn't spoken to them. And I was just kind of stood there, and the crowd were waiting. They were building up the tension. Townsend walked past me, and I love the Who. Townsend walked past me, and I went, oh, Pete Townsend walked past me. He took two yeah. steps back, yeah. touched me on the arm, gave me the thumbs up, and went, nice one, mate. And yeah. I was like, yes! Brilliant. I will have some of that! Brilliant. Cyril, Brilliant. listen, thank you very much indeed. So we've got a full men who, ladies and gentlemen, of <laughs> the Who eating food. <laughs> Hi there, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you, Paul. Uh, celebrities, were you eating, or was the celebrity eating? Uh, both. Uh, we were at the, awesome. uh, what was the Trust House Sorte Hotel in Milton Keynes. I'm going back about 30 years ago. And they're all such classy places. That's what's amazing. <laughs> I, I tell you. Yeah. Um, I, 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 my wife kept on looking over my shoulder. I wonder what was going on. So I turned around and Christopher Reeve and uh, oh. Gene Hackman were eating oh. behind us. Oh, come on. Oh, yes. Come on, guys. Come on. They were filming Superman in Milton Keynes. It's, it's, it's Superman, Superman and Lex Luthor. He was Lex Luthor, wasn't he, yeah. Gene Hackman? He Superman was, yeah. and Lex Luthor were having... <laughs> what, were they, what were the enemies eating? I have no idea. That was 30 years ago. Oh, so. man. Probably a prawn cocktail followed by a gatto. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And because uh, uh, people forget how big Christopher Reeve was, you know. I mean, Gene Hackman's always been a legend, but Christopher Reeve was a super. Did your wife, did she go um, um, a little bit weak at the knees when she saw the Superman? 
I think she did, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, oh and I thought it was me, you know. <laughs> and it never is, Paul. Not you personally. I mean, for, for men in general. Lee's on the line. I know you've taken this to the streets. Yeah, oh, it's a good one. Let's, let's, let's hear from Lee. Morning, Lee. Morning. We've had all four members of The Who. We've had Superman. We've had his nemesis, Lex Luthor. Uh, what have you got for us? Well, this is this will probably top the lot, actually. Oh, but here we go. Fighting talk. Yeah, I, li- I, I, I like it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> A couple of years ago, I was in uh, in London, Knightsbridge, not far from Harrods. So, no, no. you know, you can imagine a lot of famous celebrities around there. But Lots of I actually saw, you won't believe it, I saw Jane McDonald eating an ice cream. <gasps> that has topped a lot for me. Never. Really? Well, it, went, it wasn't just, I mean, I noticed the ice cream first because it was my favourite. It was an oyster with nuts and juice. My, now, listen, there are kids listening, Lee, <laughs> who don't know what an oyster with nuts and juice is. And in the 70s... It sounds oh. filthy. Uh, in the 70s, my <laughs> mum's favourite ice cream, when Mr Mister Whippy came around, I'd always get a... Um, is, is it a screwball? Yeah, I yeah. have those with a bubbly gum on the I get I'd get a screwball and my mum would always go and chomp down on an oyster. <laughs> she would like, kids don't know what that means. They think I'm being rude. I'm not. It was a really weird ice cream, like in a sort of like a sandwich. It was like in a sort of clam shell. <laughs> Exotic. And it was an oyster. You can still you can still get them now, yeah, they're lovely. That in Knightsbridge Lee. though, in Knightsbridge. Well, Jay, know, Jay McDonald it, keeping it real. Can I just say I, I didn't realise it was there, I saw I saw the oyster first. Can and I just say nice. I've met Jay McDonald. She's one sexy lady. Fit. <laughs> she, honestly, there are some women that you kind of you think, oh, but when you meet them, they ooze mm. sexuality. Kiora. You know why? Show Kiora. Them. They don't ooze Kiora. No, Aura. Oh, so I do apologise. She's a show well, she went up in my estimation uh, when I saw the oyster. I oh, thought, oh, oh, yes. OK, leave the oyster alone. <laughs> He's obsessed by that oyster, isn't he? <laughs> Honestly, she is she is a sexy lady. There's Showbiz. This, it's just something you can't put your finger on it. Well... I just guess I'll put it back to the oyster. <laughs> <laughs> well, well added, Kelly. That was a great addition to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks. We have fun, don't we, guys? We, we have do. great fun. We great bands. Yeah. Do you want to say something about Friday show? Not really. This might have happened. But it probably didn't. But this did. No, that didn't happen. This did. Did it happen, though, Justin? Did it? <sighs> well, if I heard it, yes, it did happen. If you didn't... It didn't. This didn't happen, though. It's OK if I lit a squirrel today. No, it's not. And on that bombshell, we say bye-bye. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this free download from BBC Three Counties Radio, your local radio station for beds, hearts and bucks, on FM, AM, digital radio and online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. 